afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Narayan Sandra. I'm here to represent both the Raspberry Pi Foundation as well as uh, Broadcom Corporation and talk about uh, the Raspberry Pi, uh, some of our experiences in bringing a open source hardware and software platform to the market and some of the areas where we're looking to expand this going forward in the future. <coughs> so um, Raspberry Pi, uh, I'm not sure how many of you in this room are familiar with it, uh, but the Raspberry Pi was created by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which is a non-profit education charity based in the United Kingdom. And the goal behind the Raspberry Pi was to um, basically create is, uh, or, and promote the study of computer science and engineering uh, technology at the school level, um, you know, junior high, high school, and college level. And the goal of the foundation is to design, manufacture, and distribute a low-cost, inexpensive um, uh, uh, computer to teach computer programming to children. Um, about Broadcom, uh, we are a, one of the largest uh, fabulous semiconductor companies in the world. Uh, we do over 8 billion US dollars in revenue um, last year. And we have a broad portfolio of technology components. And this is one of the reasons why we've been very excited to work with the foundation to bring um, these, um, the same goals that the foundation has Broadly, Broadcom shares them as well. Um, part of the reason why we share that is because we're everywhere in your life today. Uh, if, uh, you know, by some estimates, roughly 99.98% of all internet traffic in some form or shape uh, goes over a Broadcom chip. Um, from the mobile phone that's in your hand to uh, the back end uh, in network infrastructure, we do all these devices. So let's talk about Raspberry Pi and open source systems in general and what uh, we set out doing here. Um, when, this is, when did this all start? Uh, basically, this all started in the UK um, many, many years ago. Um, and uh, the, there was a strong feeling that there was a trend towards declining education of computer science and computer technology and electronics in the school system. Uh, the number of companies requiring these skill sets was growing. Uh, more and more companies wanted engineers who were capable to do a lot, but the number of people that were available was shrinking uh, quite dramatically. And um, <clears throat> this was um, not only in the job market, but in general, you know, children and you know, young adults as they went into the education system, they did not pick uh, computer-related subjects uh, for for their studies. So here's an example of the trend in the UK, and this same trend, uh, some of you may be surprised, is seen by us in Broadcom in lots of other countries, including the United States. And this is one of the reasons why we are so closely aligned with the foundation uh, and you know, the future of the organizations like uh, Costco to encourage more um, adoption or more interest in computer science education. So um, there's a, there was a significant need. Um, this is an example uh, from Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Google, uh, at that time, who basically said that the country that invented the computer, um, you know, some of the earliest uh, uh, home computers and uh, portable computers came from the United Kingdom, um, basically was not teaching programming in schools. Um, and in North America today, uh, the same trend continues. Uh, more and more schools uh, have less and less um, curriculum oriented towards uh, computers and programming. And this basically drives uh, the kids going into the university, uh, you know, just not doing uh, uh, computer studies. Uh, most children today, you know, they know how to download an app from the iPhone store or uh, the Android store, but you know, perhaps they don't know actually how to write that app uh, or, or how to create uh, you know, projects 
that are leveraged like technology. So some of the history, uh, there were basically six founders for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, it was started in the UK in 2008. Um, and the goal was to bring together like-minded people who were creating um, open source platforms. This included both the hardware side and the software side together to basically create something that was usable by uh, children and young adults of all ages. And initially, the idea was to, um, you know, some of you, uh, probably a lot of you, were uh, uh, too young to uh, remember the BBC Micro, which is one of the first uh, very popular, very inexpensive home computer that was available. And a vast majority of people, myself included, uh, grew up uh, using the BBC Micro to study computer science um, and to learn programming and learn how to do uh, interesting projects. And so we did try to leverage that same sort of uh, name, but it didn't happen, so we switched to pick a different name uh, called Raspberry Pi. And the goal of the foundation was to set out and set a target of creating a computer that could be programmed, could be accessible by anybody, and available to anybody for around 25 US dollars or 15 pounds. And the idea was that this really became, that cost was not a barrier for anybody to um, learn programming or learn about computers. Um, this is where a little bit of a tangent, uh, where Broadcom as a corporation came in. Um, we have a lot of history with open source. Uh, we, you know, sometimes reluctantly, but in general, uh, we have been a good citizen uh, uh, for a lot of our products. We deliver uh, device drivers uh, to the Linux community. Um, there's lots of examples. Um, and we also have contributed a significant amount of platform code uh, to the community, two main areas. Um, most recently have been with uh, Android and the entire Android uh, Bluetooth stack. And we also funded significant uh, development of uh, JFFP as platform level code. But one of the things that we had never done before um, is to create an entire platform from scratch that was the whole goal of that platform was to be open source. And this is the, the sort of the key challenge. So the goal of the foundation was to create a computer platform that would be open in every way. That means it was open at the hardware level for anybody to tinker with, to duplicate, to replicate. Uh, it was open at the software level, obviously, uh, to drive uh, product option. But also the goal was to create a huge community uh, around the platform so that it really reached every school kid, you know, initially in UK, but now the goal is expanded beyond that. And you know, this was a challenge for us because uh, while we would, you know, uh, we do like to participate in the community and we do like to benefit from it as well, um, it's different to deliver a completely open platform while protecting our IP as well as third party IP that goes into our platform. Uh, device drivers are relatively straightforward, but doing an entire platform in an open fashion is a little bit of a challenge. Somewhat mindset challenge, but you know, sometimes a legal challenge as well. So we kind of started this tentatively, the process um, initially. The Broadcom engineers basically devoted our time, our spare time, to develop the hardware platform. Um, and we did the first prototype, we actually manufactured them ourselves. Uh, you know, we seeded them to a whole, whole uh, set of uh, individuals in the community uh, to try to get more and more software done for this platform. And uh, you know, create some interesting applications and use cases for the, the platform when it launched. But we reached the point where really we could no longer do it in the traditional model of uh, you know Broadcom um, behind the scenes, you know, hiding, giving out the access to the, the device. 
And this is a point where we really switched over to the foundation taking the lead. Um, a number of the founders uh, are actually brought from employees when they, they volunteer their time at the foundation. But having a non-profit fronting on this design made it a lot easier for us to be open. To basically, uh, you know, if it was Broadcom releasing our schematics and our Gerbers and our design to the community, it would be a lot trickier and a lot ch more challenging to do. But the foundation being a non-profit, it was a lot more straightforward. So we switched over the design being owned by the foundation to the, um, the, uh, the uh, development to continue in front of the whole community. No longer was there a program engineer sitting in our offices doing the design. But if you go look at the history uh, and read the logs about uh, the foundation, every single aspect of this design was disclosed. We, we released the prototypes to the community. We released the schematics to the community. You know, we shut. When we ran into problems, when the first boards came back and they were dead because uh, no, uh, you know uh, some incorrect components were selected. You know, we disclosed that. We discussed that as a community. We explained the whole process. The idea behind that this was to basically show to other uh, designers, you know, what was the typical process of going through a a brand new board, a brand new system to bring up. And in the end, you know, we had a production unit, and uh, this is a picture of the board. Um, many of you may have seen this. Um, but basically, this has a broad down chair. Um, somewhere in the middle. There. Um, but we work with a lot of other companies and other partners to come up with the whole system. And because it was a non-profit, um, obviously we had some advantages when we went out as Broadcom in fact, in some cases to negotiate pricing uh, for some of these components or partnerships. So it was a symbiotic relationship. We used the foundation uh, for a lot of cases in being very open about the development, but we also put strings because of our size to get some, you know, some concessions from uh, a lot of the partners that went into this design. Uh, this is kind of a block diagram of what the the, the design looked like in the end. Uh, you know, there was the CPU and graphics subsystem that came from Broadcom. Uh, there was a Ethernet chip that came from uh, uh, SMSC, uh, and then you know there's lots of other components from lots of other vendors um, here. And this is what the final design ended up looking like. Now, of course, initially you know Broadcom built the boards, but you know it wasn't feasible for this to be done, you know, uh, all by ourselves. So, um, a a website was set up by the foundation. There was some initial funding. And the goal of the website was twofold. One was to raise community awareness about the project. Um, second was to get some um, motivation and publicity going for people to start uh, looking at you know, doing projects and, and talking about it. Um, so we encouraged our employees to take part in the community uh, uh, you know, at at the end of 2011, there were over a million registered users um, on the forums, and uh, you know, um, hundreds of thousands of posts. Uh, a lot of them answered by Broadcom engineers in terms of technical um, questions and technical, um, uh, you know, concerns from the community. And uh, we did make some changes actually in the design as we went along, based on some feedback from people as well um, uh, after the first launch. And this is where some of the things are, uh, you know, these are lessons we learned uh, along the way. Um, this was an open source project, uh, open source hardware project. And, uh, you know, based on, hello? Okay, based on the examples for a lot of other projects available at this time, uh, we were not anticipating a huge amount of uh, interest uh, in actual, you know, uh, volumes of people buying these things. Uh, we thought we'll sell a 10,000 units. We planned for 10,000 units, um, and uh, uh, but we still ran into a challenge. The original goal of the project was to build these boards in the UK, 
and we ran into a challenge. Uh, and again, having the muscle or, or the size of Broadcom behind us, we, we were able to step in, find a contract manufacturer in China to step in and take over and do the manufacturing. And so we set up to build 2000, and we you know, set up um, uh, uh, an initial sale of 10 units through eBay. And we were pleasantly surprised when each of these 10 units sold for, um, in this particular case, around uh, 2,200 pounds. But on average, most of these sold for more than 2,000 pounds. Um, we thought, OK, it's a charity, a little bit of anomaly. So, but we were starting to get a sense that the community was a lot larger than what we had anticipated. Um, so we um, decided that this was not something that the foundation and Broadcom could do by ourselves. We really needed some partners to scale this. And uh, so from the foundation side, they approached um, two major distributors, uh, RS Components, who is uh, the sponsor here today, and Premier Farnell, both of whom graciously agreed to take on the risk. Um, you know, to be honest, at this moment still, it, this was a very, very risky project from a financial standpoint. Um, you know, it's great to work in the community, um, but, you know, open source software is, to be honest, relatively easy, uh, easier to do than open source hardware, uh, because hardware entails significant financial burdens for people involved. So we launched on, you know, leap year day 2012. And what happened? In the first day, we were getting 700 orders per second. And basically, both websites, both the distributors shut down because the load was too, too high. <laughs> At the end of the first day, we had 350,000 confirmed orders from customers, most of whom put up their credit card information, willing to pay for it in advance. And this is, this is the kind of thing that um, it's good and bad. It took Broadcom nine months, along with our other partners, to catch up to the supply. For nine months from February of 2012, we were back ordered because there wasn't enough inventory of components in the system. At the end of 2012, we had sold around 1.2 million of these devices. And the fact that we had 350,000 orders on the first day created a whole new set of problems. And again, this is a lesson for people doing open source hardware because it was one thing when we were doing 2,000 boards, maybe nobody cared about uh, regulatory FCC certification, CE certification, uh, you know, testing, so on and so forth. But when you had, you know, 300,000 plus orders, we had to care because, uh, um, you know, things were, uh, um, you know, this is not a, you know, sort of sideshow anymore. So we had to, again, go through the whole process of um, getting certifications, uh, in some cases changing the board, design a little bit. One of the key things, in, and uh, you, you know, you you guys can go look at the blog, and and uh, if you're interested, one of the key things is that we did all of this in the open. Every single design decision was disclosed, discussed, and we explained to the community why certain things were being done, uh, what were the changes we were making, so on and so forth. Uh, we obviously had to bring additional manufacturers because we um, we also still, you know. Uh, overwhelmed our, our manufacturing capacity. So this is a snapshot, I think, uh, towards the end of 2012 of where, um, and this is not everybody, obviously, but whoever was willing to disclose where the Raspberry Pi was. And as you can see, um, you know, we had customers buying and using the Raspberry Pi literally everywhere. Um, even in you know islands in the South Pacific, uh, we had one in uh, in um, Antarctica as well. Uh, so this was uh, very very widely deployed. Um, 
it, it's funny, the only web server in the country of Bhutan was running on a Raspberry Pi, um, uh, as an example, uh, not too long ago. So people just came up with all sorts of creative ways to, to use the Pi. To date, we have sold over two million of these, uh, and we're still selling, and uh, the community is still growing. But there were significant changes that Broadcom had to face. It was one thing where, you know, we were dealing with, uh, when we were doing releasing open source drivers for, say, our Ethernet controller, um, you know, mostly used in servers, uh, maybe the community is very small. The number of customers is probably in a few thousand. But here, all of a sudden, we were in the, we had the task of servicing more than 1.5 million individual customers. Um, every one of them had a different vision of what being open meant. Um, so we tried the best to balance. Um, in some cases, we obviously succeeded. In other cases, we still hear complaints from the community. Uh, we did release all of the SOC documentation as open source. Uh, Broadcom has never done this before. This is the only device for which you can find um, almost the entire complete data sheet available as open source. Uh, unrestricted, we release the design schematics, the Gerbers, um, everything is open source. Uh, anybody can copy their design. Obviously, they're licensed, but um, it's the, we release the design documentation as a case study for people to learn from. Uh, we release all the drivers, platform code, API, uh, documentation, etc. Uh, but this is one of the areas where we ran into a challenge, uh, and we still hear complaints about it. Uh, we used a third-party IP to do the USB controller on this chip, so obviously we were very. Rest uh, we are not legally allowed to release the documentation, and uh, the device driver that we do have from the third party um, sucks, uh, honestly. Uh, so. Um, I think uh, you, you guys heard uh, Greg KH uh, probably uh, not too long ago uh, giving the keynote. Uh, he's one of the most uh, vocal uh, critiques of this driver, and I completely agree with him on this, but unfortunately our hands were tied. Um, but the other thing is that our engineers still support the platform. Um, you know, there's a, uh, at this moment, probably somewhat like 15 Broadcom engineers who devote their time uh, answering questions on the forums, um, you know, still doing, um, you know, development work for the software or the hardware. Um, for example, the camera. Um, uh, we designed a camera uh, to plug into the Raspberry Pi. It's available from uh, RS Components for order. Um, the camera design was done by Broadcom engineers, was tuned by Broadcom engineers, but released uh, as part of the uh, foundation's uh, open source uh, uh, hardware efforts. So um, similarly, there's an I.O. board, a breakout I.O. board that was again released as open source hardware. Um, so this platform has been interesting for us because uh, this is the first time uh, we've done so much significant amount of work in the hardware side as open source. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's been a learning experience for us. So what's the benefits? I mean, why, you know, ultimately um, the community is large, but what are the benefits we're getting? Uh, we, as in Broadcom, more important, the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, obviously the first benefit was we were able to launch and sell a, a single board computer um, that was you know, the size of a credit card for under 30 uh, pounds or 35 US dollars. And we managed to hit that goal and, uh, you know, managed to do it without losing money. Um, the, the primary goal was obviously education. So we see a significant use of uh, the device in the junior high school system in the UK, uh, primarily focused on uh, MIT Scratch. Uh, in fact, in Taiwan as well. Uh, you know, hopefully the next generation of uh, cost cup attendees. Uh, we do see uh, this was uh, something we did at the uh, National Taiwan, uh, at the International Science Fair uh, here in, in Taipei um, uh, earlier this year. Uh, and we had a lot of interest from 
uh, junior high school kids to come use uh, Scratch and to learn how to um, leverage the platform to do their programming projects. Uh, we've had uh, uh, some success uh, in participating in Scratch competitions in uh, Puli, uh, Nantau County. Um, so there's a lot of activity that's generated in the education. That was a primary goal, both from Broadcom and for the uh, foundation. And, uh, you know, in the future, more and more, hopefully, even in Taiwan, we'll see kids, you know, watching TV, but doing programming, not, you know, watching TV for TV shows, right? <laughs> that's, that's the vision. And this is where the story takes an interesting turn. Um, Basically, we started this for education, but today we've gone way beyond uh, the original goal of uh, education. Um, you know, this is like a small list of all the different ideas and projects that Raspberry Pi has been used in. Uh, we have customers who basically uh, built um, voice or gesture controlled uh, gadgets. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a, uh, a man in China who built a, uh, a voice controlled Chinese language, voice controlled uh, robot as a gift to his fiance uh, for their wedding, um, running on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have people built 3D printer controllers. Uh, we have people building security cameras to do uh, um, <clears throat> firewalls, NAS boxes, you know, QNAP is here with their NAS box, but we have people building NAS boxes, obviously not at the same level of performance, uh, using the Raspberry Pi. And we have people build, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you know, the only web server in the city, uh, in the country of Burma was running on uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, we have people uh, using this in Africa, doing cellular base stations for, uh, uh, you know, poorer communities. So why did that happen? Uh, where did we go from the goal of having just uh, you know, an education computer uh, to having thousands of projects, literally? And it's because it had an open platform, an open hardware platform. We were not the only people doing this. Um, the Panda board, uh, for example, is one such ex example. Um, but we were the most easily available easily accessible device, both from a cost perspective and also because of our partners like RS, who made it very widely available worldwide. It was very, very easy for a broad and very active community to grow up. And ideas kept piling on top of each other. You go again to the raspberrypi.org uh, website or you go to RS uh, Components website uh, that, uh, and you will see in the forums and in the uh, in the blogs, how much activity is happening uh, in terms of people coming up with creative ideas and some of the examples here. Um, so one of the earliest uh, use cases for this was with XPMC to build a media center, uh, very small footprint media center. But then people started using the IO boards to come up with a lot of uh, creative ideas uh, in robotics control or uh, you know just uh, uh, LED control, things like that. Uh, a, a person basically set up a, a helium balloon and flew the Raspberry Pi as a weather station uh, up into the stratosphere. Um, that's uh, you know pictures taken from the Raspberry Pi uh, up uh, above the clouds um, to do weather measurements. Uh, this is another creative idea. Somebody built uh, uh, a beer brewing station uh, using uh, Raspberry Pi. To, uh, and, and the Pi is used to monitor the beer and figure out when it's ready to be consumed. Um, <clears throat> so uh, this is a, a professional photographer uh, basically um, hooked it up uh, to do wildlife pro photography. Um, so to, you control uh, very uh, uh, accurately, carefully on a track um, to, to take pictures of wildlife. Uh, an example. And then uh, now that we have the camera module, we're starting to see people do um, more interesting projects. Uh, we have people who are building, uh, say, uh, people counting machines, um, people building security cameras for their home. Uh, there's somebody who's built uh, 
uh, you know, um, uh, a bird watching uh, system based on this, uh, sticking uh, this into a, a bird's nest and basically uh, hooking it up uh, so that you can, you know, remotely monitor uh, things. So lots of different ideas. This is where we are today. Where are we going in the future? Um, so some of the things that Broadcom wants to bring in, uh, one of the areas where Broadcom as a company is uh, heavily invested in is what we call uh, Wicked, which is the wireless internet connectivity for embedded devices or, or wireless connectivity for embedded devices. And the idea is that where the world is going, um, you know, there's uh, speculation or, or uh, uh, assertion that there will be perhaps 50 billion connected devices by the year 2020. And uh, most, we believe that most of these devices will probably be created by people like you uh, or in the community, not by big corporations, coming up with very creative ideas of why or how these devices should be connected together. I mean, you saw examples of you know, a, a, a brewing machine that's internet connected, uh, you know, a few years ago, nobody would think that a brewer would be internet connected. And um, again, uh, literally the ceiling is 100%. When every single device in the world is connected to every other device, um, you know, that's when you reach your limit. But until that point, there's always be opportunities and there will be uh, always new and creative ideas that people can come up with. And so our goal is to try to make this easier. Our goal is to try to make this easier on perhaps hobbyists who are trying to do this, perhaps small corporations, uh, startups, you know, individuals like you who have some creative ideas. So what are the things we're doing? Um, so with the Raspberry Pi, um, today most of the uh, stuff that's happened has been uh, using you know, like a TV or a monitor as a display. But uh, we're starting to look at ways to bring additional uh, UI uh, interfaces. So a touch controller, uh, for example, there, uh, uh, an LCD panel. So you can think of uh, you know, like a, a monitoring station or something, but basically expand the range of uh, interactions with the, with the Raspberry Pi. Um, the other thing that we're doing is, uh, as we talked about the paradigm of everything connected to everything else, um, you have the idea of uh, sensors and uh, smart wearable devices. So for example, if somebody has an idea in doing a, a you know, sports shoe that can measure um, you know, how fast you're running, and there's a wearable sensor here, then we're providing technologies that would connect those sensors up to, to the Raspberry Pi. So, uh, in this case, it's a Wi-Fi uh, uh, based sensor, so a sensor board with a wireless technology. Uh, or in this case, uh, here it's a Bluetooth low energy sensor board uh, based on battery operated technology um, that can you know, go into your, uh, on top of your body, in your clothes, etc. cetera. Um, so the idea is that as you come up with creative, idea, um, uh, creative ideas and use cases, for your applications, we provide the building blocks um, that can enable the total end-to-end -end, uh, system. So that's from the hardware side. That's what like you know Broadcom is bringing into the table here: a bunch of sensor technologies. But you also need the tools, the rest of the tools that get you there. So one of the critical pieces of this is from RS components. Some of you may have uh, heard uh, Yan's presentation before. Uh, but RS has a um, entire design uh, site uh, called Design Spark that is geared towards uh, making life easier for you as a designer on the hardware side to bring all the pieces together. So some of the tools available here, uh, it's in Chinese as well, um, not just in English. It provides uh, you know quick start guides for the Pi. It provides a whole bunch of uh, uh, interactive tutorials and videos on YouTube on how to get started, how to do your projects. Um, the power of Design Spark comes in because, uh, backed up by that, behind these uh, sort of uh, you know usage and tutorials is a powerful design library, uh, the PCB editors and and the design kits that go to build your entire project together. 
Um, all, a lot of the components that I talked about, like the camera module, uh, some of the sensor modules, these will all be available um, through RS website. So when you come up with your project ideas and you kick them together, uh, you can get it done relatively quickly. <clears throat> and then on the software side, obviously the Raspberry Pi is an open source platform, um, but we, I just talked about a whole bunch of uh, you know, sensor technologies uh, that co-work with the Raspberry Pi that Broadcom is bringing in. Uh, at, backed up by that, again, we have an open source development platform. We call it the Wicked uh, SDK. Uh, it basically, what you get uh, as a developer, you get all the tools, the infrastructure needed to build a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth low energy sensor network out of the box. Um, all open source. Uh, based on the GNU tool chains, uh, running on various development platforms, including Linux, including OS X, uh, with uh, debuggers, uh, uh, hard, both hardware debuggers and software debuggers that work with our development boards or development boards from partners uh, like RS. So that's kind of where we're going, what we're bringing um, to you as a community uh, to create and you know, expand on your innovative ideas. So we started with a very simple goal. We wanted to create the love of computing in children, um, get the idea that the, you know, we, we help facilitate the next generation of open source developers, community participants, and obviously for us as a corporation, you know, our future employees. But what ended up is that this has taken a life of its own. It's gone way beyond our initial goal and uh, the reason it's happened is because of a community like you. Uh, the power of the community, the shared ideas, the shared interests, the song, strong encouragement each of you gives the others in, in vetting ideas, in, in, um, uh, you know, in coming up with uh, creative ways to solve problems. So this has been a very enlightening experience for us. Uh, it's been a very successful experience for us, financially, of course as well, um, but it's all been thanks to um, the broad community, uh, you know, part of which is reflected here. So basically want to thank you uh, for, uh, for, you know, uh, being here and also being the support behind your success. And hopefully a lot of you will leave here uh, with some, and, and come up with creative ideas in how to expand uh, the Raspberry Pi um, ecosystem and also the application model uh, into some new creative ideas uh, and spaces. With that, uh, I think uh, we have some time for questions. Uh, I'm open to questions, uh, both on uh, uh, on all aspects. Yeah, please go ahead. Um, I, I think it's important that we pay attention, pay attention to the stability and the reliability of the drivers for the Linux kernel for, for the, the, the Broadcom parts. And I appreciate uh, Broadcom to provide uh, uh, most of the drivers, like the Ethernet drivers or the drivers for the video processors, and they works great. But um, as you know, there's, there's been a hassle on the USB driver for the Raspberry Pi, and it's been going on for like a year or, or so. Yeah, and um, because um, there's there's actually a list of say uh, working USB devices, such as list of webcams that that works with USB, uh, works with uh, Raspberry Pi, and that and that's on the Raspberry Pi wiki. Yeah, so um, and the other webcams doesn't work, and there are lots of USB parts that doesn't work with Raspberry Pi, and we are not seeing these kind of situations on other. Uh, Linux ARM em embedded boards like Beagle board, or Beagle born, or perhaps WEN board or Panda board. So, um, what is uh, Broadcom going to do to step up to the plate to provide uh, high quality drivers to ensure that uh, the, all the creative, ide creative ideas will be as in will, will, will work as in without as in these like USB hassles and stuff. Thank you. Yeah. Um. The, uh, as I mentioned before, this is, the USB was one of the areas, and still is, one of the areas where, unfortunately, we have little leverage. Um, in this particular device, uh, we use a third-party IP, and uh, the drivers and basically uh, all the quirks that go with it come from that third-party IP. Um, 
we have uh, we are spending engineering resources to try to optimize. Uh, I think the foundation is also spending engineering resources um, to try to you know work around or solve a lot of these issues. Um, part of the challenge here has been that um, uh, the vendor of the IP synopsis, um, you know, we we don't have a whole lot of support from them in coming up. You know, this the the IP was not intended to use or be used in the way that uh, the community has been using it. Um, so I don't have a very good answer for you other than the fact that uh, we and the foundation are spending some serious engineering time and engineering cycles um, to solve the problem uh, and to come up with a better driver solution. Um, but uh, because of uh, the way the hardware was done, uh, we do have our hands tied a little bit. Um, so. But that's a lesson for you know future designs for us and for others as well. Go ahead. Sure. Um, it, um, for us in um, for all the arm boards like um, you know uh, Beagle boards or Panna boards or uh, Wen board, um, they use for for instance Texas and Truman's O map. Or perhaps or winners A10 or Freescale's IMAX 6 series of processors. Yep. All of these processors, as in the chips, is available from various dis distributors. For instance, uh, the GT key or the RS or Mouser. Uh, but that's not the case with Broadcom. The BCM2835, which is the chip that's powering uh, the Raspberry Pi, is not available. As in, I've looked through uh, eBay. I have looked through all the other. Uh, internet auction sites and various distributors where I was unable to find uh, the BCM2835 uh, chips. So I was wondering if there is any plan for Broadcom to release the chip as in so that we can buy them in small quantities. For instance, I mean, uh, like we can buy them for a piece or so so we can use them in our own projects. We can design our own boards that suit our own applications so that more creative ideas can be imp implemented through, as in with, with, with the chip. So um, I, I was wondering if, if that is, that is going to happen, as in, uh, um, so yeah, thank you. It actually has happened, uh, just not through the sites you mentioned. Um, so I showed you a lot of examples of uh, what I would call more commercialized use cases. Um, so what we've typically done, um, so first of all, in comparison to the other alternatives that you talked about, the 2835 does have a slightly different architecture that um, creates some challenges for the small hobbyist. And that is because it was designed to support uh, package on package memory uh, structure, which means that uh, while there are you know hundreds of companies who can um, build these boards, typically the small PCB design houses don't have the capability to manufacture that. So what we've typically done uh, is um, you know for from a um, what we've encouraged is use the Raspberry Pi as your development platform when you come to a point where you actually need to build your own custom hardware. Uh, we are more than happy to support you um, through our distributors, uh, mostly in Asia. Actually, we have a, a lot of small customers who are you know buying a few hundred, few uh, you know maybe a few thousand max uh, of these chips. Um, we are not set up, um, to be honest, at a scale of you know one or two. Uh, perhaps RS would would uh, uh, support this in the future, but really it comes down to the uh, the technical issues rather than the logistics side of it. But if you have a project that you really need to get the silicon, uh, we're you know we're more than happy to support you. We have lots of small customers um, here in Asia. Generally, though, it does require you to reach out to us. Uh, first, and then we point you to the partners um, uh, rather than truly something you can buy off the shelf. But we have not declined at this moment um, to support uh, any design. Uh, I have I have some customers here in Taipei. You know, they're buying 50 pieces at a time from me. So, uh, yeah. Uh, 
so as far as I have seen from your slides and from other sources, most of the applications now are currently are centered around like robotics and like communications. But I also read that uh, w one of the like the features of the Raspberry Pi is its GPU. But I haven't seen really like interesting applications for uh, using the power of the GPU. So do you have any suggestion? Um, so the there are two areas where the GPU uh, has been used in applications. Um, the first one is obviously uh, XPMC as a media center. That was where um, there was a huge amount of interest. Uh, the second area where uh, it's starting to happen is with the camera module. Uh, the camera module uh, does use the, the graphic system and the GPU horsepower um, to support uh, you know, a lot of interesting features. And uh, that is the area where, uh, for example, RS has the camera module uh, beyond just uh, you know, taking a video or taking a, uh, say a still picture. Uh, you can start to look at using the GPU to do uh, more effects using the camera. Um, but unlike, say, the GPU and, say, the NVIDIA chip, like, uh, which supports, uh, you know, CUDA or OpenCL, um, the 2835's GPU doesn't really support a truly um, open programming language like OpenCL. So there are some specific targeted applications that we can support with it. Uh, and I said one of the, the new ones that uh, we're doing a lot of work on is uh, with the camera. Um, let me see if I can, where can I point? Where's the camera? Where, where should I? So this is uh, just, just um, uh, RS just pointed. So this is the HD camera module um, that's available now. This is a uh, five megapixel, I think. Yeah, it's a five megapixel sensor um, and uh, um, you know, you can do a lot, uh, you know, it's a full HD sensor, five megapixels still, um, you know, and uh, it, it, it is, the power of this is harnessed through the GPU. So a little bit different than, say, connecting a USB webcam. Uh, this is, because this connects directly into the GPU architecture, uh, you can do a lot of uh, interesting effects and applications using, using this sensor that a typical webcam will not be able to do. Hi, actually I got a model of, of Raspberry Pi this year, and when I, uh, when I un unboxed it, I found I cannot use it because I have only Bluetooth keyboard and the mouses, and it looks like Raspberry Pi, it doesn't have a Bluetooth module. You know. um, stay tuned, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the, we, we do know that uh, uh, as I showed in my slides, uh, some of the modules that we're bringing, but uh, there are more modules in the works. We know, uh, for example, a lot of customers want Wi-Fi, a lot of customers want Bluetooth, you know, they want to do more things. So we are, we're in the process of bringing some of these, uh, uh, you know, additional modules uh, to the market with, uh, in order to, to expand the range. So Bluetooth is definitely one of them. Uh, uh, what is the attitude of of those uh, of those component vendors, just like a uh, USB USB chip or any other IO 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 chip vendors, toward towards uh, 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 open source hardware platform like Raspberry Pi after your success? Uh, I don't think uh, there has been change. Uh, we do see in some cases, especially with the memory manufacturers uh, being uh, more open to come up with, say, custom memory modules and so on. Um, but in terms of uh, um, the rest of the ecosystem, like uh, like the Ethernet chip and so on, 
um, there hasn't been significant uh, change. Um, I, I haven't seen anybody else uh, come up and be really open in sharing all of the information through the process or thinking of doing that. Um, you know, there's a lot of companies who make available, you know, people talked about Freescale and TI, about their data sheets and the references on the website. But um, the way I characterize, and you know, maybe just because I'm involved in this process, but the way I see it is that we did things a little bit more than what companies typically do. We did the design in the open. You know, all the lessons we learned, uh, the mistakes we made, uh, the, you know, uh, the, the choice of components to go on the board, everything was in the open and everything is documented and uh, we, made it, we made it easy for others to follow our lessons. Um, but that is not typically the way a lot of people, you know, Broadcom included to be honest, uh, we're not saying we're better than others, but Broadcom included tend to do things because uh, uh, there are a lot of skills and design secrets that go into this and most companies want to protect that. So I think one of the things we did differently with the Raspberry Pi, uh, uh, you know, was that we did the whole process in the open for actually doing the design. Not just throw the schematic over and say, okay, here's an open source schematic, go have it. But we explained to people the process, uh, the mistakes, the, uh, the challenges, and so on and so forth to make it easy for others to copy. Um, but we don't find a lot of other silicon makers uh, do that. Uh, and I think part of it is because we had a whole bunch of employees within Broadcom who were passionate about it and were willing to go fight our management to make it happen. Uh, versus for most of the other uh, component makers, you know, it's a sales task rather than, uh, you know, something that they're passionate about. So. Okay. Um, thank you very much for your attention and uh, being here. Um, so. RS is going to come up, and I think uh, they had a, a contest, and uh, I'll, I'll call up Eric to uh, say a few words here. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Naren, for helping us to deliver this.